Hi everyone, hope you're all good. I uh, would like to welcome you on this kind of day. Uh, it is Java part that's going to help you to learn different things um, uh, with just for the API for the Swing. We are going to learn how to design and to implement some project by using database. That means you're going to learn some database application. But there's something with three. I mean, uh, some logic theory things you just need to learn before. Uh, this is going to be Java Swing Tutor. Uh, it's not going to take much of time. I don't like the old part, the old things. So, but we're going to go to the to the practical part. So, but the but thing you need to know what what do we mean Java Swing Tutor? There are some background thing you need to know. You just need some configuration. What do you mean like OLP and even just now have some some clue about uh how to deal with the java how to interact with the java but if you are the you're a beginner it's okay i'm going to make sure i mean i'm going to make sure you're able to catch up something but before uh there's what do we mean java java is a programming language it helps to solve certain problems and so on but what do we mean swing swing is just kind of a framework that helps to interact, I mean to design something by using graphical user interface, I mean different things. So for the swing, uh, actually a NetBean or a Java project is divided, it has some layers. We have layers that we follow. Actually we have what we call application layer. And it's kind of the software should have this kind of the layer. This concern with what you call graphical user interface, that means UI user interface interactive with the user interface not only that also we have that will be the first one we have the first layer the first layer also we have the second layer it goes with what you call business business logic layer this way it goes with what you call and then that's where we come up you implement what you call functional and non-functional mostly it's, it's like functionality of the program but you end up putting also non-functional requirement. Requirement. So not only that, they will come up with what you call persistence layer. Persistence. Persistence layer. This is where we come up a way our software only kind of the project can be able to communicate with database. That means from here, we need what you call the APIs, okay? Actually, that's where we need the API. That's going to make sure they're going to be able to make uh, uh, like our business logic we have that's th those kind of the functionality the control and so on when we come out the past tense that's where we need to persist some to, to grab data coming from the swing to be saved to the database so not only that <coughs> uh, in order things to happen that means you need the database of course so that you can save some data to your database okay that means we come up with database layer and the database layer we need some database management system so that the things we're able to communicate actually they end up having like this kind of the persistence layer they end up having within the same layer whereby we have uh, a way to communicate between persistence and database so without taking much time <coughs> under the persistence layer that's where we come up with some apis uh, for example we, we have what called gdbc gdbc that we that means java database connectivity also we have what called you can have even hibernate okay we can have hibernate means all methods so that we hibernate framework so that we can communicate with database okay by using what you call persistence api application programming interface so here we go for me for mine the things i want to work on is going to be simple thing i'm going to go to the design as you can and it's going to help you um not only prepare your exam and so on so just to help you to learn so the thing i'm going to get from here so I'm going to design uh, a new, I mean, to make some project here. Uh, we're going to have, we're going to request to design a simple course management application. So whereby we're going to create a student and lecture and save them in table. So we're going to have a table called person. So we're going to create one course with the list of created student and lecture where course can be taught by only one lecture and be attended by many students. I'm going to make, I'm not going to implement many to many and so on and on database level. So because you are the big, it's on beginner side, I mean beginner level. Uh, when you are advanced, you'll be able to implement those things many to many, one to one, so on. I will just implement a simplest way so that you'll be able to communicate, then later right on. So then we're going to apply what's called GDBC API. They're going to use the GDBC Java Database Connectivity Application Program Interface to save data for the course to the database and update the student data and so on. 
So we're going to have database name is going to be mid semester and the table is going to be person course. So of course that means you have two tables in database. There will be person and course. So for the person is going to have this kind of the attribute or columns in, in database. We have ID, names, type. That means we have the type, the type of the person. It can be either student or lecturer. It will depend. Also, we have course that's going to retrieve to receive the course ID. This, this thing is going to be a final key in a person that's going to receive the course ID comes from here. Okay. So we have ID names and lecturer ID. That's all. That's, that's all we have. So uh, this kind of way you can help you to manage, I mean, to learn these things. Uh, this kind of example of an exam that going to help you to prepare your exams and so on. So let us take, take time and work on these things. So uh, we're going to, to create uh, a, the design that looks like this way. Lecture student course, lecture student course, lecture student. There'll be a panel and so on, the tab pen. We have this kind of the information and so on. So let us go on and go to the OneNetBean project. Let us create a project. Let's click on file, go to the new project. It's going to be, uh, we're going to call it Java project. Then next, then we're going to call it um, course management application. Let's call it our system. Doesn't matter. Uh, the program just here, uh, let us just choose application. Let us do like this way, then hit finish. Just is going to be there, not just request to, to have shortest of time to work with these things uh, because we don't have much time for this. So the first thing we have even what you call the design layer. We're going to divide the things into application. I mean the view and so on. So the first one, let us create the first package. Let us do right click on this guy. We create a new new Java package. So Lee is going to be uh, right click on this guy. You create new Java package. I want to have a view and at the view that's where you put our graphic user interface the application layer so let us start with right click on new then you go to the other in case you are not able to see the different form class you go to the swing joy forms and that swing joy form you're going to choose the different form you're going to have a different form you give it a name you give it a name let us call it course course management app let us call app it's fine they're going to be our application nothing else that will be the course name always you can give it even shortest name but make sure uh this kind of, this kind of project i mean the class always must start with a capital letter always then hit finish so we're going to come up with this kind of the design we have our swing joy forms so there's nothing here i'm going just to expand so that we can add everything we need from that one so because as you can see on the picture we have um um we have we have lecturer student that means it's going to be three tabs under the panel so that means you're going to come up with what you call tab pan so I come up with the tab pan then just click here and then you expand to the side size you wish and let us just decrease this guy uh, as you can see we have this kind of the the tab pan but if we click outside, you're not able to see anything, but it's fine. Let us come up with the panel. As long as you're able to see this kind of the dash dash, then you can let, let it go, okay? You can see we have tab, tab one. So we need three tabs. That means, that means four, I mean three tab panel. So you come up with another one. If you don't put exactly on this kind of the dash dash, you're not going to lose the, the panel to be inside of the tab one. So that means you just leave it. Again, then you come up to the next one and then uh, just leave it. Okay, then you just rename, right click on it, you just add text, it's going to be lecture. And then so we have this one. Uh, you can even use uh, what you call F2, just rename, then it's going to be the course. We're done from here. We have lecture, student, and course. Even you can come here, you name this kind of panel so that you want to know exactly the name. Okay, you can come here, you change the variable name. Okay, you're able to see, you can say this is going to be a lecture. Always a variable name must start with small letter. You can say tab. We have this tab. Also, let us have another tab. Uh, change the variable name is going to be student tab. Also, we have this guy. 
change the variable name is going to be uh, cost cost tab. So we, after this one, let us start from the lecturer. The lecturer is going to hold. Uh, we have two. We can have uh, we uh, uh, according to the questions we have here. Let us first come up with the panel. Let us just come up with the panel so that we can add everything at the panel. So let us put inside the panel from here. Or you can leave it, it's fine. Doesn't going to. Then right click on it. You can go right click on go to the properties. You change the, its border. Let us change the border. Let us be line border. And then you can select this one. So that's going to be visible. Nothing else. Just like this way. Then okay. You close. Can you see we're able to see this kind of the design, okay? Even though you click outside. That means we are seeing an extra. We're going to come up with the label. It has come up with the three labels. Uh, you can use shift automatically without go back to click another one. So we have lecture ID and lecture name. Then you just click escape. Then you come up with the button. The button from here. There's going to be save. Save button. Okay. Now we're going to come up with G text field. That means text field that's going to grab the the lecture id just lecture id we have this one we have uh this one so now hit escape now we just expand this guy and then we just edit text right click on that text you remove everything also you edit a text text for this guy and then you just increase the size till here now we change this one let us say it's going to be lecture you can have title lecture panel okay you can then this one is going to be the extra id and then this one is going to be uh lecture lecture names we're done from here so this is only for the lecturers we can right we can come here you select one by using control you can select both of them we can increase the size is the matter of the design nothing guys because this is what design you can change the design under the font and then you can come here you say let us say 18 to be bold then hit okay you're done then you close you can see it can be increased the size nothing guys so just you can say it's going to be 10 so that you can decrease this guy to put exactly just design a good thing good looking so we just are done with just the design for the matter of the time you don't have to to continue work with too much of things i can come here you can see under the lecture tab i have uh, i have this kind of the panel it holds everything so i can come here copy panel copy this guy then i just expand the, for the lecturer i mean for the student you can see under the student without don't have anything i can now do right click and then you paste it's going to hold <laughs> everything that we're having in the lecture for the case of the time you don't have to to mess up and then you can come here you change everything just to modify it's going to be student this one is going to be uh, okay this one is going to be student also this one is going to be uh, student names we're done okay this is how we deal with the the cost let us now go to the cost the last one so it's going to be the same paste you're going to come here and then we just right click and then we paste you can see now we have this kind of things changed student uh, that means you can see we have lecture student for the course uh, is going to be of course 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 panel also we're going to have it has just you can select each and each one of them so that we can uh put above a little bit and then you come up with some some modification we're going to come up with some labels from here uh, we have labels for lecture also we have the list of the student okay now hit escape now let us say edit text we're going to be uh lecture we're going to have a list of lecture also we're going to have a list of student okay we're going to have a list of students now let us do like this way and then for the lecture it's going to be the combo box as you can see the image from here you can see it's going to be the combo box with some data also going to have the list of the student okay 
Now I'm going to come up with the combo box first. I just put for the lecturer. Just increase the size to be the same. Also, we come up with the list of the student. Okay, just come here, you put the guy here, and then you just change something, increase the size so that you can have something that looks great. We're done from here. So we can come here, we change the, to be the same thing, you got the properties, because it has the same design, you got the font, uh, you just apply board, and then 18, hit OK, then you close, and then we can come here, so it, this is going to be uh, cos cos ID. This one is going to be cos cos name. We go from here. After working on this guy, you just need to change the variable names so that you're going to end with the the designing, nothing else. So how can we change the variable names? You can just let us start from the cos. You can just right click on this one. You go to the change variable name. This one is going to be cos ID txt. Okay. Just use what's called the camel case to rename. For this guy, you don't need to rename the labels because we are not going to use the labels. Okay? So this one is going to be course names. Should be text, but it's fine. This one is going to let us call change variable name to be lecturer combo box to know exactly if it is a combo. Okay, also we have here student list. Okay, change the variable to be student list okay we done hit okay and then we have save button you change the variable name to say cause save button like this way so now we come up with the student the same process the same process change the variable name is going to be student id text also we have hit okay so we have change the variable name is going to be student names text also, we're going to have this button because each on have its own button is going to be a student save bit button. So we're done from this one. Then we go to the lecture. So we change the variable name from this one. It's going to be lecture ID text. Okay. And then we change this one, change the variable name to be lecture names text is fine. Always start with small letter and then you change the variable name for this guy. It's going to be uh, lecture save button. We're done with the designing. For the design, we are done. Just have to make sure you're going to use uh, less of time so that you're going to know exactly what you're doing. If we try to learn, let us try to run the program. Right click on this guy and then you just run then the file. You're going to see it's going to ha be a, a file, I mean, a function, a NetBean project, but doesn't going to be have functionality. That means we are done with what you call the application layer, as we do have from here. You can see we have this kind of the lecturers on save. There's nothing happening. You can type everything you need, but you can't save. You can go to the student. You can do everything you need, but you can't save. That's the thing we're going to work on. You can see even for the lecture, it's just coming with some data. You can come here, you select how many of them we wish and so on. So and then point click save, there's nothing happen. That's the thing I'm going to collect. Okay. So um so before we move on, uh that means uh we are done with what you call from here we were just working off application layer, we are done with what you call the application. That's where I found out the graphical user interface. Now we've moved to the business logic that we're going to implement the some functionality to save to the database. Great. So before before we end with the part number one, that's for the design, let us make some functionality so that whenever the user is going to save, let us say, let us say, uh, for let us make sure, let us suppose, let us suppose um, for the student, for the student ID, let us say, say you're going to have five, five student ID. I mean, let us say five character. Can you say it's going to have five character? It's fine. Or we can leave for the validation. We just use one validation to make sure the user has provided some data. Get the point? So when the how user can provide some data, you can just go ahead and then implement where you can make sure the student ID is going to be maximum minimum. We just have some crew on this guy. So let us go on and as quick as we can, uh, let us do only validation to make sure the user has provided some information, nothing else. Okay. 
So I'm going to come here for the data style from lecture. It is right click on this guy, you got the change. I mean, you got the event action to be performed. And then we go to the lecture action to be performed. Uh, we have this kind of the lecture save button. Now we're going to check to see if really user has provided something. So I'm going to use if condition. I'm going to use lecture. Use control space to come up with some the different information comes from the lecturer. So you can see we have lecture I. That's the one we need to check. We need to get text. We need to grab the text. Um, and then to say that is it empty? That means this kind of the method it is turned true or false depends if that kind of the text file there's nothing there. Okay. So not an, only one of them is enough to disallow a user to continue to save to the database because database is not in a position to save if, if data can, has been saved successful. I mean according to the validation and so on. So last data say check for the the name text dot get text. We done from here. Then we say I'm going to put curly braces. Then continue. Don't mess up with the curly braces. We just forgot to put dot. Is it empty? Okay, we're good. So now we can come say if these things happen, just use G option pen, control space, uh, G option pen. You see, it is found under the class of Java Swing form. Okay, kindly for you not to mess up or to have any kind of the error that can raise, always come here and report everything that is being found under the Swing Joy form and the Swing package. Okay, you can come here, you import everything. Okay always import everything now you back here you can say dot show message let us show a message some message and then we're going to use this uh so that means it can refer to the current working page i mean exactly the, the parent it's not like it's just using the ex this kind of the class because it has extended some class it has even a constructor that means it is a parent on its own that means it's going to refer on this kind of the class we're working on and then you say Please provide some data. Then last three errors, if if that means every every data is just there, and then you can come up with a message. Let us copy, and then it says saved successful. You can say saved successful. Successful. We done from here. So let us just test for everything. Yeah, the reason why we need to validate whenever the user click on save, we need first to check if those kind of the field, GTX field we have, the user has provided some data. If they're empty, we're going to prompt some message to show him, please provide some information, nothing else. Okay? Let us come up with the, for now, for the student, let us accomplish them together, and then we can validate them again. So, you go, you go to the right click, you go to the event, then action to be performed. And then you go to the students, it's going to be the same process. You're going to say if uh, it's going to be now student ID, control space, text dot get text, the same process. You can do some validation to say is it empty now or for the name. One of them doesn't have to allow user to continue. Dot get text dot is it empty. And then you can say put calibrations. I'm going, let me just copy everything because you don't have to type each and everything. Then we paste here. Uh, else, else, let me just copy this guy. And here to the else. Let us just copy this one and then we paste here because it's going to be the same message, right? Now let us end with the course because by default there are certain data that are there, nothing else, okay? Now let us say. Uh, it has got the action performed. So I'm going to check the fa the same thing because by default, the certain data, I mean certain value that will be in that kind of the value. So now let us go, it's going to be if cost. Yes, uh, let us do uh, this way, dot get text, dot is it empty, or cost name, dot get text, is it empty if it's empty now we come up with this kind of the message we say let me just copy please provide in all information needed so now for the errors let us just copy and then we paste it here 
Okay, we're done with all the validation. So wherever you have saved successful, that's where you're going to save data to save data to the database. Let us first run the file and then see if everything looks great. Here we go. You can now let us try. If we, I click save, we can see. I'm going to say, please provide some data. If I provide some data and then put save, you can see save successful. If I remove one of them, it's not going to save. You see, they're going to say, please provide some data. Those are the validation, nothing else. We're done for, for these guys. So now, I'll just try to welcome you. Okay, now I think we can just uh, come up with the, the next part. We are just now going to deal with... Uh, whereby now we're going to apply some business logic other so that we can save data to the database because we are now end with the, the graph quiz interface there's some logic to save data i mean some functionality because now it has some functionality now we're going to deal with a way we can make sure they're able to save data to the database so i will just recommend the next part thank you all